Hello everyone, I've made several videos on Canadian and Australian immigration, but many of you keep requesting to make videos about other countries as well. So here is a detailed video about the recently announced UK's new point-based immigration system. This is a kind of a blockbuster change in United Kingdom's work and student visa. I will tell you about its background, overview, eligibility criteria, points table, some misconceptions and also about the process. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad, helping you dream and settle abroad. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, don't forget to click the subscribe button and yes, press the bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. Alright, so to start this video, let me tell you about the background and timeline of UK's new immigration system. Why such a major change is being done? It is because of the withdrawal of United Kingdom from the European Union, which is called Brexit or Britain's exit from European Union. You must have heard about it in the last couple of years. Following a UK-wide referendum in June 2016, the British government formally announced the country's withdrawal in March 2017, beginning the Brexit process. Just a few weeks back, following a general election, the UK left the EU on 31st of January. Thus began a transition period that is set to end by the end of this year. This is when they are planning to implement a new system that will transform the way in which all migrants come to UK to work and study. From 1st of January 2021, EU and non-EU citizens will be treated equally. Let me make it very clear that it is not for the permanent residency, so please don't get confused. This is mainly for the work and the student visa. Okay, so what will be the benefits of this point-based system? Earlier, European Union nationals were able to grab jobs very easily, but now, just like the non-EU nationals, they need to score certain points to get a work visa. So basically, it increases the chance of non-EU nationals by many folds. Mostly the people from India, Pakistan, China or other countries like that will be benefited to get the work and study visa but that would only be for skilled immigrants. Okay, so now let's talk about the overview and the eligibility criteria. The new rules aim to attract the brightest and the best from around the world, which will assign points for specific skills, qualifications, salary or professions. Visas will only be awarded to those who gain enough points, whether you are from EU or not. You would be granted the visa only if you have enough points. Of course, this has been inspired by Australia and Canada's immigration system. So this is also a point-based system. Now, how you will actually get points, I'll tell you later in this video. But let's discuss the eligibility criteria. So a job offer for a skilled job in UK by an approved employer sponsor is the mandatory point here. So you need to have a job offer in order to get this visa. The job will need to be at a required skill level of RQF3 or level 3 or above. Now what is this level 3? Let's check out. Right, so we are here at Wikipedia's National Qualification Frameworks in the United Kingdom on this page here. It has mentioned the RFQ levels. So RFQ level 8 means you should have a PhD degree. Level 7 means that you should have a master's degree. 6 means you should have a bachelor's degree or diploma. And going further, you'll see that level 3 is actually quite low. Level A here means that you should have a school leaving qualification. So basically, the educational qualification for this point-based system is not at all high. It is even lower than a diploma. So this is a very good point. You should be able to speak English at a required level. Now when I say that, you would instantly ask me this question, what's the band for IELTS etc. So they haven't specified anything, they haven't even specified that we need to clear IELTS. I am sure there would be a criteria of clearing IELTS because IELTS being a UK based English test, there would be a criteria for IELTS but they haven't specified anything until now. So I won't give you any fake information. The minimum salary threshold would be 25,600. Earlier it was around 30,000 in the earlier phases of discussion, but then they reduced it to 25,600. 
if a person earns less than this but no less than around 20,480 pounds, they may still be able to apply by trading points on specific characteristics against their salary. Now, what is this funda? What is this uh, equation? I will explain it to you in detail when we discuss the points table. Apart from this, let me tell you that this is a program for skilled workers. For highly skilled workers like researchers, uh, scientists, there's another route which is called as global talent route. For low skilled workers such as people working as laborers or maybe people working in the farms, there's no visa. They're actually cutting it down. They don't want to bring in people with low skill level into their country. So they've very specifically mentioned that there would be no route for people with low skill level to enter UK and work over there. Okay, so now let's discuss the points table. A total of 70 points is required to be eligible to apply. Some characteristics are tradable. So the cutoff score would be 70 points and on what characteristics you will actually get those points, let's discuss. So the characteristics would be obviously your job offer. If you have a job offer from an approved sponsor, you'll get 20 points. If your job is at appropriate skill level, then you'll get 20 more points. And if you can prove that your English is at required level, you will get 10 more points. All these three factors are non-tradable. So basically, if you have a job offer by approved sponsor at appropriate skill level, and if you're able to prove that your English is good, in that case, you'll score 50 points. And now you will need 20 more points to be eligible. How you can get 20 points? Now those 20 points you can get from your salary. So if your salary is actually above 25, 600 pounds, in that case, you'll get 20 points. But if your salary is lower than that, then in that case, you'll get 10 points. And for a salary range of 20,480 to 23,039, you won't get any point. So basically it comes down to your salary as well. If your salary is good, you will directly be eligible to apply for the visa. Now, if your salary is lower than that, and if you have a job in a shortage occupation, then you'll get 20 points. So that is an add-on. Let's say your educational qualification is PhD in a subject relevant to the job. In that case, you'll get 10 points. Similarly, if you have a PhD in a STEM subject relevant to the job, then you'll get 20 points. What is a STEM subject? It means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So basically, if your salary is less than 25,600 pounds, in that case, you need to be working in a shortage occupation or you need to have a PhD degree. Only in that case, you can get that visa. I think it is pretty straightforward, but I can give you a couple of examples to elaborate further. So maybe a university researcher in a STEM subject wishing to come to UK on a salary of, uh, let's say, 21,000 may still be able to enter UK if they have a relevant PhD in a STEM subject. So they won't get any point for their salaries, but they would get 20 points for their PhD degree in a STEM subject. And that would make up to 70 points. Likewise, a nurse wishing to come to UK on a salary of, uh, let's say, 22,000 would still be able to enter UK on the basis that the individual would be working in a shortage occupation. So the 20 points that she lost because of a lower salary level would be gained through the job in a shortage occupation. So I just hope that it is quite clear to you. Let's just quickly move forward and discuss the student and travel visa. Basically, the students will also be covered by this points-based system. They will achieve the required points if they can demonstrate that they have an offer from an approved educational institution. They should also be able to prove their English language capabilities and they should be able to support themselves during their studies in the UK. So that is about the student visa, about the travel visa for EU citizens as non-visa nationals, meaning they can come to UK as visitors for six months without a need to obtain a visa, but they can't work or study in UK from 2021 onwards without a proper visa. There won't be any changes for other nationals. Okay, now let's talk about the visa process. The application process is supposed to start in autumn of 2020 so that migrants can start to apply ahead of the system taking effect in January 2021. Migrants will make their application online after submitting documents and paying a fee. 
non eu citizens will submit biometrics at a visa application center as they do now for employers sponsoring skilled migrants the process will be streamlined to reduce the time it takes to bring a migrant into uk by up to 8 weeks so so the processing time they say would be around 8 weeks and they've also mentioned that they would try their best to lower this processing time even further so in less than 2 months you would be able to get the work visa or the study visa and as the time proceeds and as they refine their process the processing time would even reduce further so thanks guys that was all that i wanted to tell you through this video i just hope that this video would make things a lot clearer in your mind going forward so thank you guys for watching this video if you like the video please click the like button and yes if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please click the subscribe button if you have any queries any doubts or any feedbacks please put it down in the comment section below i would love to answer them thanks again for watching this video